All right, so currently just waiting for my guest, uh, Mr. Walker Barnes, Mr. Super National 2016 to tune in. So as soon as he does, hey buddy, as soon as he does, we'll get going with these questions. Um, and uh, yeah, see what's going on with Walker, what he's been up to lately. I think we're set to start at 7 p.m. So I'm a little early, but I was just talking to Walker a little bit ago. I know he'll be signed in here in a little bit. <clears throat> oh, my brother joined the chat. Hey, Adam. What's up? All right, so again, just waiting for Walker. Whenever Walker's signed in here, we'll get going. But uh, just waiting for him to log in here at the moment. Hello to everybody that's tuning in. I appreciate you guys. Won't be too long, probably about 20, 30 minutes tops. We'll be, we'll be, uh, I'm just asking, just catching up with Walker, asking him a few questions, seeing what he's up to. Hello, Ashley. Hi. <laughs> Looks like Walker is online now. Let me get him signed in here in a minute. Hey, buddy. What's up, Nate? How's it going? How are you? I'm doing well, man. Look at this. That's beautiful. Where you at? Where is right. this? Um, I'm sitting down right here. Uh, Benedict Canyon. You know where that is? Uh-uh. Not sure. I'm still learning California. I feel like I should know more than I do after being here almost a year now. But Dude, we got to go on some hikes, man. It's gl it's glorious because the, there's no smog right now, so it's just I didn't even think about that with the quarantine and pandemic and everything going on. I've seen some satellite images of uh, different cities around the world and how much pollution's reduced just from people being staying at home and not being out in the cars. And it's crazy. I mean, it is. Yeah, you can see. That's beautiful. Yeah. I'm jealous. I'm down. Anytime you want to go on a hike, man, I'm always game for a hike. Okay. And I see you've been snowboarding a little bit. I have been. I was before a good third of the season got shut down with yeah, the pandemic. I, so we're about gonna, to buy our uh, our icon pass. Yes, that's what I was looking at. I'm lucky I did it. Honestly, this year I don't know if they they money back or what they ended up doing for this year, but I was going to buy it this year. And then we're not doing it with Supernatural and everything. I figured yeah. I wasn't have time to go as much, but yeah, make sure that's the plan. I didn't even know you snowboarded. Oh yeah, oh yeah! I just got one. Uh, got a board for Christmas, and we're looking. Nice. At, I'm looking at like bindings and boots right now. All right, there's another thing to add to the list. We got to do for sure. Yeah, perfect, perfect. perfect. <laughs> All right, man. So really quick, everybody that's tuned in, uh, I am Nate Sutherland, Mr. Supernatural, uh, coming live from Los Angeles, California, where Walker also currently resides. Um, so welcome to the series of live chats with all the former title holder, holders of Mr. Supernatural USA. Um, just wanted to catch up with all the guys. Uh, talk about all their unique experiences with Mr. Supernational, and then just, you know, find out what they did to catch up with them. Uh, please welcome my guest, Mr. Walker Barnes, the first ever Mr. Supernational USA, uh, Mr. Supernational USA 2016. Walker is an actor. He's a model. Um, you can be seen in feature films, uh, The Lawsuit. Lost in, Lost in. Lost in. You got it. You got it. Yeah. Butter, and uh, also co-stars in episodes of the American television series, American Horror Story, also awesome right there. Um, Walker, like I said, he was the first ever Mr. Supernational USA, the first ever guest in the series, uh, but Walker, hey man, what's going on, how are you? Doing well, hanging in there, you know, trying to adjust to this this new normal, trying to figure it out. So, uh, I was going to say, how, so where have you been at throughout the quarantine, and what have you been up to, how has this affected you? So I was in, uh, I was back in my, uh, my home in Tampa, Florida for a little bit. And then, hold on, I'm getting bad, we're getting bad wind. Um, and then I, I was there for about a month, uh, taking care of some family stuff. And then I just came to, uh, came back to LA and I've been 
I've been riding a lot because obviously acting is, is pretty slow right now. So I've been riding yeah. a lot. Yep. And, um, and yeah, I mean, just trying to, trying to figure out how to, how to adjust and how to be all right with this. Deal with the deal with the craziness. The yeah. 20 in general. Yeah. It's been a pretty wild experience. I think that's the best you can really do. I mean, I'm kind of the same way as I had a chance this last week to go visit some family, you know, the traveling bands and restrictions, but a little bit lifted. I got the chance to go see some people back home. But yeah. Same here. I mean, with productions and everything, shut down i just recently started getting to acting taking classes and it's kind of like right when i started getting into all that everything got shut down you so shut everything down Nate, with your acting yeah, yeah your but, acting uh, shut it down i know so hopefully things will start opening up again i think i saw some articles that back up a little bit. yeah yeah i think production is supposed to be starting this week or something production comes back good there yeah um so glad that you're doing well though glad that you're still coronavirus lit. <laughs> Dick just yet, but um, I know the first thing I wanted to touch on is I just wanted to ask you what was your experience with Mr. Supernational, the first Mr. Supernational USA? Kind of what happened? How did you get into that? What's the whole story behind it? And what was your experience like? Oh man, wild! I mean, even like thinking about it, just like it, just the whole experience was was absolutely nuts. I mean, so nuts to the point where I I ended up writing a screenplay about it. Um, yeah. But, Basically, I mean, in essence, what happened is, you know, about two or three weeks before the actual event, I got asked to go. Um, I didn't really know what it was. I mean, probably, you know, similar to you, uh, I didn't really grow up in that world, um, yeah. but kind of got found and, and one thing led to another and, you know, I was treated really nicely, ended up going to Poland and competing and and it opened my eyes to uh, just a whole different world and, and you get to meet people from all different walks of life and um you know one of those things that you just that i will will never forget and it, and in fact i was like this is too good of a story to just like let it die there so I ended up writing a screenplay and, and i've been on that journey now for the past about year and a half yeah yeah. yeah, I was gonna say because you, you told me about it last time I talked with you. We were talking about your screenplay. Is it is it loosely based off the experience? Is it kind of a verbatim experience? Or what is the what is the screenplay? I mean, sort of like I guess is what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is. Uh, hold on. Nate, sorry. Oh, there we go. Say it again. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I was asking you. So, is it the screenplay you're writing the mr is it mr usa is that the title yeah. of it yep, yep, mr. Yep. usa is it is it loosely based off your experience is it kind of uh something that's verbatim yeah what you yeah literally I mean, it's definitely like loosely based you know we we definitely took some like artistic creativity and and sure. made you know to to make the story sound a little bit better but i mean generally what we wanted to do uh kem and i my co-writer is we wanted to sort of take people along the same sort of like roller coaster ride that i went on and then come out on the end and, and this like this eye open in this eye open world of like being able to experience you know cultures of all different walks and be able to like look at things from a completely different perspective yeah absolutely yeah. i think you and i can relate in that aspect but we were both like you said we're both from not backgrounds i mean anything remotely related to you know, pageantry or modeling or even acting at least for me initially you i'm assuming too before you moved up to the yeah LA, yeah not really any experience coming up Florida, but totally um, yeah it is it's eye-opening and it's kind of weird how just the different connections you make from different people throughout the country it is really eye-opening talking to different guys that are your age and, i mean how much stuff you can relate to and how much stuff you honestly just it's totally different than i mean you've experienced right now. right but i think what you what you realize and what i realize is that like you walk away realizing that like we're way more alike than we are different yes absolutely you know? it's why it's why it's insane it's honestly it's like a once in a lifetime experience if anybody asks me about it so I tell them, you know, perish the experience because it's really it's one of the few opportunities you get i mean if i mean it's very rare for you to be able to get that many a group of guys that large group of guys from that many different walks of life that many different locations around the world and you're all together for a good you know couple of weeks and just you, you get to talk to each other, you get to get to know each other, and just hearing different stories and different backgrounds of people. It's, it's really amazing. I mean, like I said, it's a good, I think it's a good thing, like for like you and I too, because it, I mean, probably for everyone that did it, because it, it allows you to just sort of like surrender to like whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. You exactly. Have to like fully be yourself and, and see what, what comes of it. Yep, exactly. I think me and you are right, right on the exact same outlook on the uh, 
Yeah. Just something you do. You just gotta be yourself and go for the flow and just enjoy enjoy the ride. Uh, cherish and you know absorb as much of it as you can. Yeah. Um, do you feel like the experience has affected your you know your current life that you're working actor, writer, producer? I mean, yeah, completely. I mean, at, just as as a writer, my you know my first screenplay that I've really like gotten to like dive into is yeah. now Miss USA, and and as an actor, I think it has allowed me to be a little bit more comfortable walking into an audition that maybe I'm a little bit scared of because like, I feel like this was such a giant leap of faith doing, doing this, doing Mr. Supernational. It was such a jump out of my comfort zone that it kind of pushed the new normal. You know, what is now, what's now the new normal for you? What's the new normal for me? And it kind of like drops, it makes you just like drop into that fear. Not necessarily like the fears, the fear is always going to be there, but it sort of just like lets you, kind of embrace it and like take the back seat as opposed to uh to let to like steering the car yeah just let go and you know kind of, exactly what's the new normal like i like that that's uh yeah that's a good way to put it it is it just kind of creates a new normal for you where you do just sort of learn to go with the flow you know experience all you can expand not be so much up in your head and concerned about what other people are saying or doing or thinking you just do your own thing and you know enjoy the experiences the opportunities that you get that come with it um Right, because people are always going to have like perceptions of of what they think that it that it is, but you can always you can change it just by being who you are. You know, exactly. That's something that I really like about it. Exactly. That's kind of been my biggest thing. Is you know, I don't want it to take away from who I am. As a person. I want to be able to do you know things that I want to do, accomplish the things that I want to accomplish with this platform that you're given. And it's, yeah, it's, really, it's a very cool opportunity. In the end. But it's like it's weird though because you have to like toe the line of. You know, because I feel like you're kind of like this, is, and I, because I definitely am. You don't want to be looked at as as someone who is like shallow or trying to use the platform in like some weird, um, some weird like way. I, I think you and I both are, are trying to for it to at least come across as like being very authentic. And authentic. like I'm like I'm almost like scared of not coming across authentically, so I like try to I, be more private. But I feel like in order to maybe encourage people to come across more authentically, you kind of have to, have to show, have to yeah, show you before, you right? do, Exactly. Exactly. I but totally it's a tough, it's a tough, uh, it's a tough line to tell. Exactly. I, I had actually a, a friend of mine, one of the, my coworkers, a nurse that I work with, she actually, she made up, a, she brought up a good point to me. I was kind of talking about that same struggle where, you know, you don't want to appear like this, this cliche, uh, you know, superficial pageant winner model, that kind of a thing, which I think is sort of, you know, fortunately that's the view that a lot of people have of yeah. pageantry and that kind of lifestyle in general. Um, so it is a struggle. You don't want to appear like that on social media. You want, we want people to see the real you. And, you know, that's just, you know, it's a part of your life, but it's not you in general. It's more of a tool more than anything where you can accomplish things that you want to accomplish and, you know, and do different charity work and just do a lot of things with the platform that you're provided. But uh, she and said like that, you know, it's like a it's a it's a mold that like you are now you know you just being like mr usa me being in mr usa you're like in that in that square but like you do with it what you want inside the square yes exactly you know that's how i look at it as well and then yeah. that's what she mentioned she said you know people if you concern yourself with people that don't actually know you in person you concern yourself with their opinions and what they're thinking you know that's not going to get you anywhere it's the people that actually genuinely know you those are the ones you should be concerned about who they, how they view and whether they think you're not at the end of the day, you're a good person and you're again, authentic and genuine. And so I think that's, that's the thing. So you true. get caught up in what other people that you don't even know necessarily think of you when it's, it's at the end of the day, you gotta be true to yourself and, you know, and you know, at the end, you know who you are. Um, just, yeah. Yeah. It does. <laughs> it it, it kind of opens up out. a lot for you. It makes you find it out, like figure it out quickly, you know, like, cause yeah. I think that is one of the reasons why I'm like an advocate for continuing to do things that like freak you out a little bit because it makes you be able to reel back in and realize like what is true to you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, um, you know, yeah, it's like, again, I think it's just, it's, it's easy to get caught up in, in worrying about, you know, all that and worrying about all these things that don't really matter in the end, you know, worrying about opinions and stuff like that. But, um, it's, People don't know what it's like. People don't know the experience. And so the best we can, we got to just, you know, express how, 
that experience was for us and, and what it's done for our lives. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a really cool deal that we got to do. We got to experience that. Yeah, it's funny, too, that we had, like, you know, kind of similar backgrounds, just like being, like, growing up, you know, playing sports, playing football, both of us. Yeah. You, you playing a little bit longer than me. But, yeah. Um, and then ending up coming out here, it's, it's just – it's wild to me. And it's also just – it kind of makes sense, you know. Agreed. And I think that's what I like about the Mr. Supernational, the, at least from the USA standpoint. I think Mr. Supernational organization in general, what they're looking for is authenticity and somebody that's genuine and relatable and, you know, provides a legitimate, good role model and example for, for people everywhere. So, I mean, it's a great honor that we were chosen to represent the U.S. in that aspect. I think it's, it's yeah. something that they don't want, you know, your cliche model pageant person they want somebody that's real somebody that's genuine and again somebody that people can relate to and i think that's what's really awesome about this is it's, it, it looks beyond the superficial looks beyond the you know the good it, some physical beauty obviously plays a role but uh it's it's much more to it there's a lot more depth to it than i think a lot of people realize yeah which is good i mean that's the way it should be i, I in my opinion you know i feel like we're kind of shifting away from the like the conventional you know, just like looks is everything type of thing and, and shifting towards, well, that's good that you like take care of yourself and you look good, but it's like so much more than that. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's more of a discipline aspect to it too. I mean, if you're in shape and you take care of yourself, it's, you know, it shows your discipline and you can, yeah. you can uh, follow a regimen, but um, how, so what exactly brought you from Florida? As you said, Tampa, right? Yeah. Yeah. From Tampa. When did you, how long ago was it that you moved to LA and when did you know, I mean, was it always the plan was you're going to be an actor and, and that's like, that's what you'd always had your, your mindset on or what? Well, how did definitely, you know, how did it come about? definitely was not always the plan. Um, I, I was actually about to go to law school and oh, no kidding. I, yeah, I was in, uh, you know, I went to UF, I graduated from university of Florida. You know, I was, I took the LSAT, was about to go to law school and, and I think it, it was probably taking a couple of acting classes my senior year and then realizing kind of like taking a personal trip and realizing, you know, what is actually going to fuel my flame? What's going to make me the happiest? And I realized that like when I was 12, my brother and I got a camera and we filmed everything. And that was something that we loved doing. You know, it was just like filming skits, filming each other, playing sports, whatever it was. I loved creating. And I realized that, you know, coming from Tampa, it wasn't really, uh, you know, a normal thing to think like, oh, I'm just going to go out and be an actor. But yeah. I think I, it probably just like culminated, got to like a boiling point in, in college. And I realized that this, you know, it was kind of something that I, I just had to do. Right? And I don't know if you've ever been like pulled to go do something. It sounds kind of like weird. I'm, and esoteric. I, I'm relating with you more than I think you know, man. I yeah. All right. Good. 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 Understand. Yeah. Cause because I, I felt the, the pull and, and it seemed weird. It seemed illogical, but I just ended up surrendering, I guess, in the same sort of way and, and coming out here and, yeah. um, and then just seeing what would happen, seeing what would unfold without kind of without like any connections or anything. And, and just, it's been an awesome ride. And I'm so grateful for like everything that I have experienced. Yeah, and I think at the end of the day, you're pursuing what you know you're passionate about and what you truly enjoy. Because, I mean, obviously, being a lawyer, going that route, that's more stable. I mean, you're for sure, you know, it's, it's a good job. You know, you'll, you'll have work, you know, you make good money. And, but it's, it takes, I mean, it takes a leap of faith to just go after your dreams, to go after acting yeah. something that's very <laughs> unfamiliar to you, very unsure about what the future will bring. And, I mean, that takes, it takes a lot of guts to be able to do that. So, yeah, I, I think that's, if anything, I'm with you. I totally understand. I think that's you know, that's changed more in my life than anything, just having the, you know, just being able to move out to California and pursue the things that you want to pursue, um, especially not knowing anybody at all, because I'm right there with you. I didn't know a single, didn't know a soul when I moved out here, not really. Yeah, dude, it's weird. And, and I think till some, you know, you'd think like it's like a lack of brain cells, because if you think about yeah. it really hard, you can overthink it and say like, okay, it doesn't really make sense. But I think like, that's just like human reasoning and, and you know, not to get too like spiritual or anything, but I do think there's like a, the deeper level of, of thinking comes from like the gut and the heart. And if you're feeling that, then that is kind of the feeling that you should be listening to. And absolutely. And I, I know it's hard to like separate the two, but like, I think if you are feeling called or pulled or whatever to do something, then you got to do it. Absolutely. You don't want to live with regret. And I think if anything, if you wouldn't have ever gone that route, I mean, you'd be, you know, you'd always be thinking what could have been. And, you know, yeah, what, yeah, yeah, exactly. You exactly. 
Yeah, exactly. I think, no, yeah, I totally, I'm with you on that. A hundred percent. That's, that's exactly how I felt when I moved out here. It's something that I had to do. There's actually, it's kind of funny. There's a, there's a Steve Harvey. When I was asked to do Mr. Supernatural, I was approached about it and I, actually I said, no, I didn't want to do it. I was saying with you, I'm like, you know, that's not something guys from Nebraska or Florida do. That's just, you right. know, from that background, I had no right. experience with it. I'm like, I don't know about this. But there's a Steve Harvey interview I watched one time and he talks about it and he says, you know, at some point in your life, if you want to pursue and be successful and achieve the things that you want to achieve, you have to take that leap of faith. He goes, there has to be a moment where you're uncomfortable and you just, but you know it's the right move for your career, for what you want to do with your life. You just, you have to do it. So I think a big part of it was moving to California, same as you, and then also, you know, agreeing to do something you're totally unfamiliar with is, you know, with patches competing in Mr. Supernatural, but opens up all these doors. And then once you realize, you know, it's, you can open yourself up to all these different opportunities and there's so much more out there that you can pursue if you just, you know, take the time to not care about, again, what other people think and just, you know, not necessarily go the safe route and do what you're, what you're passionate about. And I think you realize that like being uncomfortable is not the worst thing. It's kind yes. of, it's actually really good for you. You know, it's, it's freaky because it's like against our nature because of self-preservation and, and whatnot but it's really good for you. Exactly. I've always told any of my, you know, I, I, one of my things I like to say is I don't feel like you ever, no real growth ever comes in your life if you're not uncomfortable. You have to be, you have to push yourself outside your comfort zone to have any sort of growth or change in your life. And so that's right. something I think I really learned with competing in Mr. Supernational, you know, and I keep that in mind today. And I think it's, it, you know, as far as just life in general, it's, I'm very grateful I had that experience because it's really taught me that you have to push yourself. You have to be out of your comfort zone every so often to really make things happen in your life that you want to happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how many times are you uncomfortable just doing it? You're probably like probably countless. A lot of the time. Yeah. <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> the vast majority of the time, even when I showed up. And luckily, there were some guys there that had been models and had done some stuff like that in the past that kind of helped coach me through. Thank God right. for that. I didn't even think I had any. I had to go buy a suit. Didn't have a suit. I didn't have any nice clothes. All my stuff was from like Target and Kohl's. And <laughs> Betty, so I'm like, I didn't even feel like I came prepared. But no, I, you know, everything worked out in the end. Obviously, yeah. Obviously, things worked out for you, Nate. It's awesome. Um, so other than the, I know you're doing the Mr. USA, so I'm very excited to, to read that at some point and see what, happens, what comes from that. But uh, you also you recently started as a new production company. Is it uh, Seasick Crocodile? Yeah, yeah. My, my co-writer and I, Kema, uh, we started this production company called Seasick Croc. Um, we, uh, we're pretty excited about it. I mean, you know, we were the two writers that wrote Mr. USA. Now we're working on something else, but we're also working on producing, mis de producing and developing Mr. USA. But we yeah. hope to continue to just create projects that are, you know, comedy driven with some heart and uh, kind of like this enter into this new age of comedy and, um, you know, hope to sort of relate on that, on that level, because I think we're kind of at a, an interesting stage of uh, comedy right now where people are like scared to like, Feel like they're walking on eggshells yeah. making jokes you know because Absolutely. people you know people always make the joke it's so pc or whatnot but i think it just we just need to shift the way we look at comedy a little bit or the or the jokes that we are making um so Absolutely. we're kind of like we're kind of taking that leap uh kem and i and and uh we want to keep continue to create works that that inspire and, and make people laugh man i'm excited i'm excited to see Oh, I think, I mean, you got a lot of potential. Just having met you in person, I think you got a ton of potential. And, you know, Appreciate acting, that, Nate. Appreciate that. Writing, I mean, you've got very, come from a very creative, you know, just a very creative mind. I mean, obviously with the Mr. USA, again, I'm super excited to see that. Did you submit that to some film festivals? Did I see Yeah, yeah, a couple, couple of script festivals. You know, everyone, we got into everyone we submitted to, and then we ended up being finalists for a couple of them. So now oh, we're, awesome. we're Congratulations. pumped, man. Super pumped. Yeah, thank That's you. We're awesome, yeah. We're now, you know, it's weird too because when you're attached to a project like that, you're so biased. And you know, yeah. I know, I know the story is good, and and but you don't know how the writing is or anything. So it, it's, I know it's like the ego getting fed, but it's very affirming. Um, yeah. When when you're like, we're finalists. Okay. For sure. Wow. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. Regardless if you know it's good or not, it's nice to hear other people say it's good. It is. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes yeah. it is. I know that sounds stupid, but it it, it definitely is. So you know, we got to be. We're like semi we were semi-finalists for I think two or three of them and then got in all six of them. So awesome. we're pumped about we're yeah, we're just stoked about the future of it. Like I, I think when I initially took on the project and, and realized that it was something I needed to do and wanted to do, I, I think I just didn't, I was, I had this naive idea of how long 
a script from start to finish takes you know in, into like the evolution of making the movie too yeah. it is such a process but like process, each part yeah. of it is really is really fun and, and is um you know has its own journey which is cool yeah is this the first time is this like the first experience you've had with i mean kind of this being your project your baby where you start to finish writing the story you know having experience what you experience kind of coming up with the storyline and then writing it you know kind of coming up with uh where it was going to go from there as far as production and actually creating the the film and then submitting is this the first time you've had a project like this yeah yeah i mean i've written like other short things prior to but nothing as big as this and and nothing just nothing with with you know the how complex it is and how complete it is and um so yeah this is definitely the biggest and most complex project that i've i've ever taken on and you know hopefully it'll just trigger a sort of chain of events where we continue to take on more and more and bigger and bigger that's awesome man yeah it's really cool it's got to be cool to look back and see where you come from coming from florida graduating thinking you're going to law school deciding you want to be an actor moving to la <laughs> and now look at where you're at getting rewards yeah. from film festivals you got a, a project in the works and yeah it's, that's really awesome man. Congrats. it's fun dude it's fun i think i think when you you know, again, talking, going back to like that, that leap of faith or, or that just like commit to the uncomfortable. I think things work out in a way that you could never have even perceived prior to doing it. Like when you do it, when you just make the decision, whatever it is, things kind of happen. And maybe it's not in the way that you would think that they they would happen, but they kind of do happen. Absolutely. And, and there's something special about that journey that I don't think would have happened if you played it safe. Yeah, 100%. I think the entire, just pursuing your dreams, I mean, not to sound totally cliche, but it, you know, it's cliche because it's true. Pursuing your dreams, you're never going to go wrong if you're, you know, at the end of the day, you're trying to accomplish what you know deep down is what you want in your life. And it might not be, end up the exact way you think it's going to, and the journey might go, you zigzag all which way, but I think you're never going to be disappointed if you're constantly pursuing and doing things that you want to do. Yeah, and, and I think as you continue to, like, do what it is or what you think it is it at least leads you like just by taking action just by committing it at least takes you down a road that'll open other doors if it's not the door that you think you yeah, know if, if you're exactly. if you're not even if you're not even committing and don't going down that road it's like you're not you're not even like looking at those doors those doors aren't even open they're on like a yeah. different level like you're it's only going to lead to more opportunities more connection i mean that's exactly with mr supernational usa i mean you look at yeah. that experience right there just the different open doors that open up for you i mean and just the effect it has on your personal life and just how you view you know the world in general and, and it's just it really does give you the confidence to pursue the things you want to pursue and you just kind of understand you have an understanding that stepping outside your comfort zone and trying something different sometimes has amazing benefits and again it opens up a lot of different opportunities for you. yeah but, all right man I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap it up here do you have anything you'd like to tell anybody out there anything you'd like any, any messages you'd like to send or anything about your new production company or your script I mean, I, I feel like I would feel bad if I didn't at least talk about, you know, what's going on right now, just just with the, the civil rights movement. And just, Absolutely. you know, I'll just touch on just the fact that like us, you know, being two white males and, and talking about being uncomfortable. That's a feeling right now that I think a lot of people are feeling is that uncomfortable on being uncomfortable. But that's the whole point is that in order to, for change to happen, I think you have to feel uncomfortable and so that's why I am excited about, you know, while it is really tough to, to watch and tough to go through, I think it is really important. Um, and, and it's like the catalyst for change. So I'm excited about what's to come. Yeah, exactly. I'm 100% agree, man. I think it is. It's again, it's difficult. And even just in your personal life, having those difficult conversa conversations with yeah. and friends, yeah. you know, especially coming from, we come from very conservative states. And right. a lot of the time, you know, it's not necessarily – any blatant bigotry or racism that we might have grown up around, but there's those underlying issues that you can get the best. And it's, it's difficult to have those conversations, with especially people that are used to, you know, the traditional way of things. And, um, you know, it's, it's tough to, to bring these issues up and make them, you know, very, very uh, apparent. Yeah, but I just know. challenge people to like, challenge your stereotypes, challenge your thoughts. Like they're not, you know, they're not permanent. Like figure out where they came from and then challenge them. Starts and with see, you. like, why they're there, you know? Yeah, it starts with you personally. You have to yeah, do, bro. You have to, 
you have to educate yourself on all that's going on. It's easy to not look into anything further and just, you know, stick to your guns and look at things the same way you've always looked at them and, you know, entrench yourself in one position. It's, it's difficult to, again, you know, discuss things with people, talk to other people with different perspectives, different viewpoints, ideas, and, you know, just educate yourself, understand the protests and what's happening and why they're happening. And again, I think that's what's hard. God, yeah. All too often in the country, you know, we, we don't, we don't actually open ourselves up to debate and discussion and we just, you know, we stick with our same mindset we've always had. So that's, that's what's hard. And we need to pursue that and encourage others to do that. I think I agree a hundred percent. Well said, Nate. Well said. Thank you, buddy. All right. Anything else you want to let the fans know? Anybody from uh, Mr. Supernational that you, uh, if you, you're 2016, you want to give a shout out to? Shout out. All my boys. <laughs> All the boys. From no, I'm, I'm. I'm good over here. I appreciate you having me on, though, Nate. All right, man. And always love talking with you, man. Always good talking. We're going to have to do a hike sometime soon. Let me know. I'm For out. Sure. Maybe talk about some possible collaborations in the future. Okay. All right. All right, buddy. All right. Well, thank you to everybody for joining us today. Um, we'll keep you posted. Uh, we'll be doing some more super live chats coming up here. Walker, obviously, is the first one, Mr. Super National 2016. Um, but we do have queued up. We'll let you know the dates a little bit further in time once we know the schedules of uh, these other guys, but we'll be doing an interview with Mr. Supernational USA 2017, Cody Andrick, and then also Mr. Supernational 2018, uh, Nicholas Kotselis. So thank you guys for joining us. I really appreciate you tuning in, and I hope everybody has a great rest of your Monday. Thanks.